Greetings everybody and welcome to the channel, I'm your host, Hadron. In this episode of the Top 10s, we will explore the greatest Byzantine emperors in history. Just like any list that I make, this is a purely subjective one, and my opinion only. Just as a note, there is a common grey area where people will often include Constantine on their top list of Byzantine emperors. He will not be included in mine. This is understandable as he is the one who founded Constantinople, the city that bore his name and was the capital of that empire for many, many years. Many thus see him as the founder of the Byzantine Empire. I however have elected to include only the emperors who reigned after the fall of the Western Empire in 476, purely the rulers that we would consider to be Byzantine. And as another side note, there is no such thing as the Byzantine Empire. What we today call the Byzantine Empire in its day would have called itself the Roman Empire. Byzantine is simply a modern distinction, used by historians to describe a very different cultural entity that arose as the Eastern Roman Empire aged and changed over the many years of history that it existed. But if you were to ask somebody who lived in that empire, they would have called themselves Roman. So if I use the phrase Byzantine and Roman interchangeably in this list, this is why. With that having been said, let's delve into this week's list. Number 10. John III John III was born in Thrace to a highborn family in the year 1192. By the year 1204, the Fourth Crusade had led to the fall of Constantinople and the crippling of Byzantine power. The Latin Empire was established and the rest of the Byzantine Empire became independent in its wake. In the year 1216, Theodore I, founder of the Empire of Nicaea, welcomed John to his court, seeing his potential as a leader, and married him to his own daughter, Lascarina, setting him up as the heir to his throne. In the year 1221, Theodore died, and John succeeded him, as had been arranged, sparking a war to secure succession from his opposition, which ended in 1224. The following year, John began a series of military campaigns, expanding his borders to reclaim territory that fell during the Fourth Crusade to the Latins. John continued his campaigns until the year 1242, when he recaptured the city of Thessalonica, which had been taken by the Latins in the Fourth Crusade. This victory marked the beginning of the reconquest of Byzantine territories. In the year 1254, however, John would die, but his lasting legacy was bequeathed to his people. In 1259, only a few short years later, John III's existing military campaigns continued after his death, culminating in a treaty which would lead the Latin Empire to officially recognize the Empire of Nicaea as the legitimate Byzantine successor state. The Latin ceded territory to Nicaea only a few short years later. By 1261, Constantinople was recaptured and the Byzantine Empire was re-established as the Empire of Romania. Number 9. John I John was born to an aristocratic family in the year 925. He fought in the wars against the Hamdanids at the side of his uncle. With the death in the year 963 of the Emperor Romanos II, John urged his uncle Nikiforus to take the throne, which he did with John's assistance. However, with palace intrigue, John was stripped of his command, leading to him to conspire to assassinate his uncle and seize a throne for himself in the year 969. In the following year, John faced several internal threats and rebellions by different groups within the Empire. In the year 971, John led a successful military campaign against the Kievan Rus, forcing them to submit to Byzantine authority. Then in 972, he turned his attention to the Abbasid Empire. First he campaigned against Mesopotamia, then in 975 he attacked Syria reconquering many of the cities of the Eastern Empire's former domain. In the next year, the highly successful conqueror and general died under mysterious circumstances while campaigning against the Abbasids. He was then succeeded by his nephew, Basil II. Number 8. Basil I, the Macedonian Founder of the Macedonian dynasty, Basil I was born in the year 811 in Macedonia, then part of the Byzantine domain. Basil entered the service of a relative of Bardas, the uncle of the emperor Michael III, eventually rising to the emperor's favor. He was then forced to marry the emperor's favorite mistress after having been ordered to divorce his own wife. In the year 865, 
Basil schemed to convince the Emperor that his uncle Bardus was planning to usurp his throne after murdering him. Basil then murdered Bardus on the orders of the Emperor himself, eliminating a serious rival and gaining more power at court. Becoming hugely popular, Michael invested Basil as Caesar and then in 866 as co-emperor. When Michael lost interest in Basil, he knew it had become time to act. Assassinating Michael, Basil took the throne for himself, becoming sole emperor. For the next two decades, Basil faced internal challenges and opposition from supporters of other claimants to his usurped throne. Yet despite his low birth and poor education, Basil continued to rule, respected by many in the court. He instituted a series of reforms to strengthen the army and the authority of the emperor. He led many military campaigns against the Arabs, the Politians, and the Bulgarians, continuing to expand the borders of the empire. Renowned for his hard work restoring the city itself and the empire he ruled, Basil died in the year 886 in a hunting accident, and Leo VI succeeded him. Number 7. Leo III, the Isurian. Leo III was born in the year 685 in Turkey, in the region of Assyria. An established general, he commanded the Anatolian province in the reign of Anastasius II. In the year 717, Leo seized the throne after deposing the emperor Theodosius III. The same year that he rose to power, Leo was forced to successfully defend Constantinople in the Second Arab Siege of the city. Nearly 100,000 Muslims and 1,800 ships attacked the city, bringing the Byzantines to the edge of ultimate defeat. This siege lasted until the year 718. In this famous battle, the Byzantines deployed Greek fire to defend themselves against the Uyumad fleet, saving the city from capture. Nearly all the attackers and ships that embarked on this campaign never returned home, giving the Byzantines one of the most crucial victories in their entire history and crippling the Arab expansion into Byzantine lands for centuries. In 726, Leo began the first period of iconoclasm, sparking huge divisions in the empire. Iconoclasm is the rejection of the worship of icons and images. This religious controversy would rage like wildfire. This led to several revolts against his policies and his rule. In 741, Leo passed away and his son Constantine V succeeded him as Byzantine emperor. However, his support of iconoclasm would continue to live on far after his reign, but due to his successful defense of the city and salvation of the empire, he would long be remembered by the Byzantines. Number 6. Manuel I. Comenos Manuel was born in the year 1118. He showed tremendous courage during the failed siege of Neo Caesarea. He greatly impressed his father, the then Emperor John II. The fourth son of the family, he had never expected to rise himself to the throne. However, he was handpicked by his father to succeed him on his deathbed, passing over his older brother Isaac, who was already in the imperial palace. Elevated by the army in the field, as they were still on campaign and far from Constantinople, he dispatched his aides to quickly seize the palace and city, securing his authority and most importantly arresting his brother before he could wrestle power for his own. Entering Constantinople, he was crowned emperor in 1143. Securing his position, he freed his brother shortly afterwards. In the year 1144, Raymond, the Prince of Antioch, one of the Crusader states, sought protection from Manuel against the forces of the Islamic Jihad raging against him. Manuel ruled during the Second Crusade and had the unenviable task of aiding those Crusaders through his borders, whilst defending his own territory against them during their passage even clashing with them outside the very walls of Constantinople itself. In the year 1148, Manuel courted an alliance with the Holy Roman Emperor, marrying that emperor's sister-in-law, Bertha, which had been prearranged during his father's rule. Throughout the entirety of his career, he was forced to defend the empire against both Islam and the Crusader states, holding the borders of his territory together, a dangerous balancing act. Manuel fought many campaigns, even invading southern Italy in 1155, a master of diplomacy, his successful reign was only overshadowed near its ending with the disastrous battle of Muriel Kefalon and the subsequent collapse of Byzantine fortunes thereafter that followed in its wake. Manuel died in the year 1180. Number 5. John II Comenos Coming in at number 5 is Manuel's father, John II. In the year 1087, John was born in Constantinople. 
He was the son of the then Emperor Alexius I. After the death of Alexius in the year 1118, John became the sole emperor after co-ruling with his father for many years. Despite this, he faced resistance to his ascension to the Imperial Purple. Even having to secure his position by forcing against the machinations of his sister, Anna. John faced resurgent trouble from a Turkic people known as the Pechnegs and defeated them in the Balkans in 1122, with the aid of the elite force known as the Vrindian Guard. In 1130, he fought against the Turks in Asia Minor, returning to Constantinople in triumph in 1133. Then, in 1137, he conquered the Rubenids of Armenia, sacking their capital city. Then John attacked Antioch, one of the great prizes of the East, attempting to wrestle back control from the Crusaders who had held it for 40 years. He arranged the marriage of his son Manuel I to Bertha, which would take place during Manuel's reign many years later, strengthening the alliance with the Holy Roman Emperor Conrad III of the West. He again campaigned, this time in Syria in 1138, fighting alongside the famous Knights Templar, once again gaining victory. In the final campaign of his life, he returned to Antioch, desperate to try to regain control of it from Raymond, but he was forced to withdraw that winter and planned to return in spring to finish the job. John, however, was mortally wounded in a hunting accident, leading to his death and the ascension of his chosen successor, Manuel. Number 4. Alexius I Comenos in the beginning of this trio of emperors, we have Alexius at fourth. Alexios ruled in a period of instability unlike any in Byzantine history, with the First Crusade. It would be Alexios's plea to the West that would inadvertently lead to the coming of the Crusade. In the year 1071, a monumental battle was fought at Manzikert, and the Byzantines suffered a humiliating defeat at the hands of the Seljuk Turks. These events led to the turmoil in the empire at large. Alexios was born in the year 1057, and by the year 1078, he was appointed as the commander of the Western Field Army by the Emperor Nikiforus III. He ascended to the throne in the year 1081 at the age of 24 after joining a conspiracy to overthrow his predecessor. He then began the long and arduous work of undoing all the damage that had been wrought against the Empire and its shrinking domain. For 37 years, he was in a state of near constant struggle. First, the Normans under Robert Giscard and Bohemond, his son, attacked Dyrrhachium and Corfu. Several defeats transpired before he was finally able to take the fight to the invaders. Using shrewd diplomacy, he bribed Henry VIII, the German king, to attack Italy and the Norman holdings there. In Thrace, he was forced to deal with the threat of the Pechnegs and the Politians. The biggest threat, however, that he faced was, of course, in the east against the Seljuk Turks. The Turks had almost completely conquered Anatolia and wrestled it from his empire. This was the struggle that caused Alexios to seek aid from the West, resulting in the coming First Crusade. He would help the Crusaders through his territory after exacting a promise from them to return any Byzantine cities to their control after they had been taken in exchange for his aid. During the Crusader siege of Antioch, however, Alexios had led an army to march to the assistance of the beleaguered crusaders, but he was incorrectly informed of their defeat, and thus he withdrew from the field, never coming to their aid. This crucial mistake caused a permanent breach between both factions, the crusaders and the Byzantines. They never forgave Alexios for abandoning them in their darkest hour. From that point onwards, any city that the crusaders took control of, they kept forming the Crusader states, much to the angst of the Byzantines and Alexios. Exhausted from his years of struggle, Alexios died of disease in the year 1118, leaving the throne to his son John to carry on his family legacy. Number 3. Heraclius Heraclius was born in the year 575 in Cappadocia, in modern-day Turkey. Heraclius would rule during a massively chaotic time, watching most of the empire slip away, only to rise up and to reclaim it all in a stunning victory that would echo throughout the ages, setting the stage for the coming rise of Islam and its conquests. In the year 610, Heraclius was proclaimed Byzantine Emperor after rebelling against the unpopular Emperor Phocas, thus beginning the Heraclian dynasty. He inherited a crumbling empire and immediately set to work saving it from destruction. From the years 613 to 628, Heraclius faced the invasion of the Sassanid Persians, 
who had captured huge swaths of the Eastern Roman Empire and its territories including Palestine, Egypt, and Syria. By 622, Heraclius began to push back after spending years building up the forces that he would need for a massive counteroffensive. However, in the year 626, the Avars and Persians laid siege to Constantinople with 80,000 soldiers while Heraclius was in the field in the east, away from the city. Dispatching a third of his army to help hold Constantinople, he kept the rest and continued his aggressive campaign against the Persians by launching a massive counteroffensive straight into the heart of the Sasanian Empire. With such a large force attacking and unable to take Constantinople, the Persian Empire was in a weakened state, of which the cool-headed Heraclius richly exploited. In his lightning campaign, he defeated the Persians in several battles, forcing the Sassanid king Khosrow II to flee. In 628, the unthinkable happened, and Heraclius entered Ctesiphon, the great capital of the Persian Empire, recovering the true cross for his people from the city. With peace now secured, the siege of Constantinople was over, and so too was the Sassanid Empire, which had begun to collapse shortly thereafter. Heraclius returned home in triumph. Now, however, with the defunct empire a shadow of what it was, the Arab conquest easily swept it aside, and in the year 636, Heraclius had to bear witness as a brand new and much more formidable empire arose on his eastern border. In the year 641, Heraclius died and was succeeded by his son, who was left to deal with the rising nightmare in the east. Number 2. Basil II, the Bulgar Slayer Basil was born in the year 958 in the city of Constantinople. By 963, the age of just five, Basil became the co-emperor with his brother, Constantine VIII, under the regency of his mother, with the death of his father. In 976, after the death of his brother, Basil became the sole emperor of the Byzantine Empire. Basil spent the early years of his reign consolidating his power, challenging his rivals within the military who would attempt to wrestle control from him. By the year 986, the Bulgarian Empire had begun launching attacks into the Byzantine Empire. In 995, Basil won a series of victories against the Fatimids in Syria. Then, in 997, he reconquered Greece from his Bulgarian enemy. It was, however, in the year 1014, after 28 years of war with the Bulgars, that Basil won a crucial victory at Clyden. With this victory, Basil captured 15,000 Bulgarians, and then he ordered the eyes out of 99 out of every 100 men to be gouged out, leaving a single man with each group to lead the others back to their Tsar. This event earned him the reputation as the Bulgar Slayer, and sent terror through the ranks of the remaining Bulgars with this shocking display of cruelty. After some more minor fighting in 1018, the Bulgars submitted and the Byzantines annexed them and their lands into the empire. Even with this massive victory, Basil just kept fighting year after year in Armenia, Iberia, Mesopotamia. However, in the year 1025, Basil, after a reign of 62 years with no successor, died, ending the Macedonian dynasty, which had ruled the empire for two centuries. He was then succeeded by his brother's son, Constantine VIII. Basil had nearly doubled the size of the empire during his highly successful reign. At number one, Justinian I. Justinian was born in the year 482 to a peasant family in northern Macedonia. This remarkable man and his rise to power is truly an incredible story. The last Latin emperor, Justinian dreamed big and put bold plans into action to achieve his goals. Far from the perfect emperor, his hands were soaked in the blood that were spilled upon them. He was a man, however, of great resolution and ability to entrust leadership in the hands of capable servants and officers. Rising to power in the year 518, he became co-emperor with his uncle, Justin. However, with the death of his uncle, Justinian became the sole emperor in the year 527, the first challenge to his rule was during the Nika riots in 532. This enormous uprising in the city of Constantinople was led by opposing factions, demanding the removal of certain officials that Justinian had placed in charge. Nearly ready to abandon the city, his wife, the Empress Theodora, inspired him to stand firm and hold the city in the face of the uprising. Brutally suppressing the riot, nearly 30,000 civilian rioters were killed. However, with his rule secured, Justin could set his sights on his ultimate goal. 
first preserving the empire and then expanding it once more into its lost territories. By the year 532, Justinian's eastern frontier had been secured, and his ongoing war with the Sassanids had ended with an eternal peace. This allowed him to turn his sights on the reconquest of the Western Roman Empire. First, he set his eyes on North Africa, and from the years 533 to 534, he entrusted the great general Belisarius with the campaign. Belisarius recaptured it from the Vandals, reuniting it once more with the Byzantine Empire. In the year 535, Justinian launched the reconquest of Italy, first under the command of Belisarius, and then later the general Narses. The campaign was initially extremely successful. Pushing back the Germanic tribes, the forces of Belisarius reclaimed the city of Rome. Around the same time between the years 532 and 537, construction of the great Hagia Sophia, or Holy Wisdom, was begun in the capital. This spectacular building was in its day one of the greatest ever constructed. Built as a church and now serving as a mosque, the building still stands in Istanbul today and is truly a wonder of the ancient world. The empire's territories continue to expand with North Africa, large portions of Italy, and eventually southern Spain itself. However, with the outbreak in the year 542 of the bubonic plague, also called the Plague of Justinian, the city's population and economy was devastated. Powerless to stop said devastation, Justinian was forced to watch as all that he had built crumbled around him. Justinian died in the year 555 and was succeeded by his nephew, Justin II. He was often referred to as the last Roman, being the final emperor of Rome to speak Latin and not Greek, which would soon become the language of the new realm. So, do you agree with the list? Any emperors you feel that should have been included or excluded? I would love to hear about it in the comments below. Also, the usual stuff. Like, comment, subscribe, all that. It helps grow the channel, and if you are a fan of this type of content, I imagine you would want that. Thanks for watching.